Today we're going to talk about image compression, specifically lossy image compression. So lossy compression is when you compress an image but the reconstructed image is different from the original. Hopefully the differences are unnoticeable or minor. In this lecture we're going to look at these methods, uh, block transform coding methods such as the discrete cosine transform and that's used in the JPEG standard <clears throat> and predictive coding. So block transform coding divides the images, divides the image into sub-images or blocks like uh, size n by n and it's going to apply a transform to each block independently. For example the Fourier transform. Then we take the output of that, the coefficients from that transform, and we quantize, namely uh, truncate or throw away some of those coefficients, and encode the remaining coefficients to a, um, using a variable code length. And so this is where the compression comes in. So to reconstruct it, we undo that. We decode the symbols going from our variable code words to the, the regular binary values, um, apply the inverse transform to undo this forward transform, and then put those pieces together to reconstruct our original sized image. So in general, to apply a transform, uh, we take our n by n image, let's call it g, and do a sum of products with a basis function, a forward basics function called R. So this R is, a, is also n by n um, and it has coefficients u and v and so the resulting um, transform coefficients will be a function of u and v. To uh, do the inverse transform we do the same thing, sum of products with those transforms t of u and v with a inverse transformation kernel which is also of size n by n. So that will produce our original image back if we have used all the coefficients and not truncated anything. And an example of this would be the Fourier transform which we've seen before. In this case the forward transform are these exponents e to the minus j 2 pi ux plus vy and the <coughs> inverse transform is e to the plus j 2 pi ux plus vy etc. We'll look at a couple of other types of transforms though that might be more suitable for image compression. One of them is the walsh hadamard transform and this is pretty simple. It's really just plus, plus ones and minus ones. So the forward and reverse or inverse functions are the same, these kernels, and they're equal to powers of minus one. So we have this exponent here which we compute a, um, an integer sum and of course if that result is odd we get a negative one, if it's even we get a positive one. So the results are essentially binary images where well the results are really plus one and minus one. I've shown the, the white is corresponds to plus one and the black corresponds to minus one. So in this case we're showing um, <coughs> four by four basis functions for different values of u and v. So when u is 0 and v is 0, the, the basis function is just a constant of plus 1. If the value of u is uh, 0 and v is 1, then the basis function looks like this. It's a plus 1 for values of uh, x and for values of x less than a half, uh, half the image size, and negative 1 for um, values of x greater than this half here. Um, and similarly we can look at the basis functions for uh, increasing v, or inf increasing u I mean, and then kind of the combinations which result in a checkerboard like this. <coughs> so this would be good to use if your image was binary and had structures that kind of looked like this. In that case the basis functions would do very well in compressing this. For example if my image um, had portions, sub-images that looked like this or like this, then I would get um, high coefficients when <coughs> for these uh, basis functions 
and zero for everything else. So, so that would be easy to compress. Um, a more common transform used in image compression is the discrete cosine transform. And this is essentially <clears throat> just products of cosines. So we have a cosine function in the x direction and a cosine function in the y direction. Um, and so those are multiplied together with different values of u and v, which would give us the essentially the period or wavelength of those cosines. <clears throat> and this is used in JPEG, although not the newer version of JPEG 2000, which uses wavelets. Just to visualize this, um, I have a bit of code here <clears throat> that um, displays the basis functions. Let's see, in this case, 32 by 32. And here I've chosen u equals 1 and v equals 4. And so this code simply uh, implements the equations I've shown here. So I'm going to calculate the cosine in the x direction, the cosine in the y direction, plot those and then take the product to give me my function g and then show that as a surface. So if I just copy that and run that, <clears throat> so here are the, um, that's the uh, function, the cosine function in the x direction, which just is, looks like a uh, half of a cosine. Um, so it's going from a high value to a low value through zero here. This is the cosine in the y direction. In this case I chose uh, I believe v equals 4. So it's two full cosine waves. And this is the product of the two um, as shown as a surface. Um, and so I can move that around you can see uh, in the y direction, it's mostly, um, well, I have this rapid variation, um, two full cosines. Uh, and the other dimension, it's just a single uh, half cosine. So anyway, if the uh, image had uh, basis functions that looked like this, again, it would yield um, efficient compression. Here is the uh, four by four basis functions for the discrete cosine transform. Um, in this case, we're just showing <coughs> values of u and v ranging from zero to three. So, for example, this is a uh, half a wave, half a wavelength of a cosine function, as we saw earlier. Um, this is a full wavelength. Um, let's see. I don't think I have two full wavelengths here. This is, looks like one and a half, and so forth. So to see how to use this in compression, <clears throat> what we can do is uh, apply the discrete cosine transform to sub-images or blocks. And in this case, uh, we're showing it applied to each 8x8 eight eight block in the image. Next, what we do is we keep only the highest magnitude, 50% of the coefficients in each block, and just set the others to 0. And then reconstruct each block by taking the inverse cosine transform um, using the remaining coefficients. So this lower um, row here shows the error between the reconstructed image and the original image. And it also shows the root mean squared error value. So this column is um, the result of applying the Fourier transform, using that as our uh, transform function. The center column is the walsh hadamard transform, and the right column is the discrete cosine transform. So on this image, the discrete cosine transform yielded the smallest um, RMS error. We can also look at the effect of uh, the block size. So instead of using an 8 by 8 block, we could try 4 by 4 or 16 by 16, etc. And uh, this graph shows that the root mean squared error um, gets better as you increase the sub-image size, I don't know, till about 16 by 16 or 32 by 32, and then it slowly starts rising again. And uh, just as we saw from the previous slide, 
the discrete cosine transform works best on, on this image here. And uh, this shows uh, graphically what the reconstructed uh, image looks like. Um, this is the original. This is the reconstructed image using uh, the top 25 coefficients, 25% of the coefficients, in a 2x2 two two block size. This is the same thing for a 4x4 four four and an 8x8. Eight eight. So <clears throat> as you can see visually, the larger block sizes give better reconstruction. Incidentally, the 2x2 two two block is essentially four, four values, right? So it's 2 times 2, four values in each block. So if we keep only the top 25% of that we're keeping only one value and so the reconstructed image um, is really the uh, a constant uh, for each two by two block <clears throat>